If you want to boost your sex drive or learn more about what gets you going, it's a good idea to start with the three key areas that have been found to trigger sexual desire in women, intimacy, space, and being the object of desire. Some people believe that sex is just as enjoyable without emotional closeness. Casual sex and meeting up with strangers are thrilling and sex is more of a way of getting close than what occurs after you're near. Others' sexual desire feeds on the sensation of being entwined with their lover. You want to do everything together and be together all the time. Simply said, you want to feel like one, and when you do, it's a turn on. For many other women, sex is better when they are the aggressor rather than the object of desire. What genuinely matters to your libido and what gets you on during sex is being drawn to someone else rather than being drawn to yourself. Everything revolves around the other person. When it comes to regaining your sexual drive or discovering what causes sexual desire, it is critical to try a variety of approaches. However, if you're not sure where to start, increasing closeness, establishing space, and making yourself feel attractive are all wonderful places to start. There are several factors that influence women's desire for sex. As a sex therapist who often treats women with low libido, it's crucial for me to focus on what turns my clients off rather than what elicits sexual desire. Because you can't elicit libido until you know what's preventing it. However, libido is a balancing act that demands you understand what turns you on as well as what puts you off. When we think of the word intimacy, we generally think of sexual and emotional connection. Both types of intimacy are genuine and valuable methods of expressing and experiencing love and closeness. Emotional connection, in effect, is what sets off sexual desire. To even consider sex, you must feel close to your partner or spouse. They must have expressed an interest in you, your feelings, and your overall well-being. You must have the impression that you have a strong emotional link and that your love is reciprocal. In essence, you must feel secure. This is not to say that sex needs to be entirely about intimacy or attachment building. Even though most people associate intimacy with sexual and emotional connection, it is actually a very broad phrase that incorporates much more. And these characteristics might be just as vital as having amazing sex or feeling emotionally connected to one another. There are 17 types of closeness, according to researcher Stephen T. 5. Parental intimacy, service intimacy, and crisis intimacy are a few examples. These are key factors to consider, and they may all assist to boost closeness, and hence libido, in the long run. Even though closeness is a significant aspect of what causes sexual desire in many women, it is not the entire tale. In fact, intentionally concentrating on avoiding getting too intimate so that you don't fuse together is essential if you want to get in the mood, contradictory as it may seem. This is one of many excellent strategies to maintain a connection. To complicate matters further, this act of melting together is what we typically aspire for in monogamous relationships. It's not unusual to feel like you can't get enough of the other person during the start of a relationship when you're in the throes of infatuation. The issue with this is that for many women, sexual desire arises in the space between you. You end up squashing the space where your sexual desire might be generated when you strive hard to be as near to each other as possible. As psychologist Esther Perel puts it, fire requires air so don't cram it. To be connected while still feeling sexually attracted to your spouse, you must establish your own individuality. Because it may be tough to switch on if you don't know where you end and the other begins. According to prior research and a current study on the issue, one of the most crucial aspects of female sexual desire is feeling sexually appealing. Women want, 
and want, to feel irresistible in order to desire sex. This is evident in women's sexual dreams, as many fantasies revolve around the idea of being desired sometimes by a large number of individuals at the same time. This is not to suggest that males and persons of other gender identities don't require this in order to feel hot. However, when it comes to what causes sexual desire in women, this aspect comes up often. Fantasies about becoming the object of desire can manifest in a variety of ways. They frequently toy with the concept of coercion, play being the essential word here. This is a common motif in many romance and erotic fiction works. Romance, fanfiction, and sexual tales were all highly popular among women, according to physicians Ogers and Gudam, who researched what turns men and women on based on internet search history. The illusion of coercion was the same. As a sex therapist who formally specialized in sex after sexual assault, I want to be clear that these dreams involving compulsion are never motivated by a desire to be sexually abused. You've already consented implicitly since it's your imagination. And just the thought of exploring the fantasy in your imagination implies that you have power over what occurs and where the tale goes. Being the object of desire isn't only a common theme in female sexual fantasies. It's also seen in the way body image influences desire. Feeling good about ourselves comes not just from external validation in the eyes of others, but also from within. However, it may be difficult to feel attractive when society emphasizes all that is wrong with women's appearances. This is obvious in the dozens of ads that target various problem areas in women's bodies and faces and promote solutions to remedy these concerns. If you want to increase your libido, you must learn to quit nitpicking your body and instead be nice and kind to yourself.